Welcome to the first episode of Falafel Bites. Today I have Noel Rice here with me. Uh, Noel is a master consultant at Falafel Software for the last 14 years. And him and I have been working together for over 20 years now. And he's also the head of the testing department here at Falafel. And we have a very interesting subject today uh, regarding writing script code for Test Complete. It's a product by SmartBear. And using TypeScript, um, Test Complete uses uh, six different scripting languages, so from Delphi Script to JavaScript to VB Script, uh, C Sharp Script, C++ Script, and now Python. And a lot of people have been asking, can we use TypeScript? So we're very happy to have Noel here uh, with us. And uh, we would like to start by saying, why did you want to use TypeScript with Test Complete, Noel? Well, for enterprise level applications, um, they need to scale and to be able to need to be able to maintain your script. Um, when people record scripts, they end up get, getting lots and lots of just verbiage. With TypeScript, you can get that under control for enterprise level applications and get a framework going where you, you build things once and can use it from then on. So I take it for the polymorphism and inheritance and all the object oriented, it's much easier with TypeScript to do that. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, can you write TypeScript directly into Test Complete in the editor? You cannot. There's not an editor for that right now, but you can write in a lot of other editors uh, and have it compiled out to JScript, which Test Complete can easily read. What kind of editors can we use outside of Test Complete for that? So Atom, Eclipse, uh, WebStorm. Uh, we're using uh, Visual Studio, uh, Microsoft's Visual Studio Code. Um, many, many editors will have a link for that for you um, off of our GitHub page at Visual Studio, uh, GitHub Visual Studio Test Complete TypeScript. Oh, excellent. So I'm hearing Visual Studio Code and Sublime and WebStorm. So that means I can actually start writing this code on a Mac, something other than Windows, if I want to. You could. Oh, that's excellent. Um, I also noticed when I looked at the framework that you have a lot of uh, .d, .d.ts files. What are these? These are definition files. It's a way of TypeScript knowing uh, about some other framework that it doesn't know about internally. So for instance, test complete, TypeScript knows nothing about that. If you were to write in log.message or sys.desktop, it would have no clue. Uh, with these definition files, we can tell it what it should be looking for. And not only that, we can give all of the methods, the properties, and the IntelliSense, uh, the Javadoc style comments, it all goes in there. Is that only for IntelliSense reasons or also for compilation reasons? For compilation also. Also, so both are writing. And where will we be able to find these files? I mean, for everybody that's watching this video, can we go ahead and download these and start writing TypeScript for test complete? Yes, um, on our GitHub uh, page, GitHub Falafel Software, Test complete, TypeScript. Yeah, we will have that we'll in the video so people can click on it and go get the files. That's not a problem. Um, why does the framework have its own version of lib.d.ts? I mean, there is one that comes from TypeScript automatically, but you created a dif different one with the same name. We took the existing lib.d.ts that comes with every version of TypeScript and stripped out the pieces that we didn't need. There's a lot of web building specific pieces to it that have nothing to do with testing. We just needed the basic types. Um, so we've pulled those other pieces out. That's great. Uh, my last question would be, a lot of people have invested heavily in JScript and Test Complete over the years. Are they gonna still be able to write JScript even if, though they are trying to use TypeScript? Can you mix and match both together? Yes, you can mix and match. Uh, test, uh, TypeScript it spits out JavaScript, and so uh, at the end, Test Complete is going to be reading the same thing. So I can write JScript code inside of TypeScript files? Yes. All right, excellent, excellent, that's great. So the only thing left for us here now is for you to give us a demo on uh, how we, uh, we can use the framework that you've created and um, why is it a more elegant, more maintainable framework to use with Test Complete. Okay. So in uh, the project here, this is, a, this is Visual Studio Code, and we've got our framework code here that we provide out on uh, GitHub. We've got some base classes that do a fair amount of grunt work for you. Um, at the, we've got a base class here that knows what it is, uh, what its class name is, how to log messages, how to log errors. Very simple. Coming from that is 
items that test complete knows about. So we need some way to bind what uh, test complete objects are to this framework, and this happens uh, in the test complete object. So when you create a, a test complete object, you pass it the element or the page or whatever it is that you're working with. This knows uh, what kinds of methods and properties it supports and can require certain methods or properties to make sure that you're on firm footing before you proceed. The next object is visible object. So this is something that's on screen. So this is visible object. It extends the test complete object and it requires that it exists, that it's visible. Uh, and it has a very important uh, method in here uh, called when ready. So it has a way of checking to making sure that you can test with it, that you could uh, write text into it, click buttons, and so forth. So it uh, goes in a loop and checks to make sure that um, it's visible, enabled, et cetera. All of the things that you tend to do um, in, in scripted code, but you tend to repeat a lot, um, or you end up making a little routine and putting it somewhere, this is built in. So this is mainly actually for, especially for web browsers, this would save a lot of time for checking if an item or an element is available on the screen or if I can click it. That will save a lot of time, a lot of typing, uh, especially for maintaining these tests for the future. That's correct, and less possibilities of bugs later on because you're going to write it in one place, which we've already done here, and then you just reuse that everywhere else. That's excellent. From that, there is the notion of element, and this is something that you can perform some kind of an action against. You can type into it, you can click it, uh, that you can uh, verify its, its value. On top of that, there's one last class as uh, web element, adds just a bit more uh, oomph for web applications so that uh, if you need to scroll an item into, into view on the browser, you can do that and make sure it has some minimum size that you don't end up clicking it and getting a, I, I clicked on something out in the space kind of an error. That's the basic um, hierarchy there. There's one other object that's kind of interesting unto itself called alias, which encapsulates, as you might ex expect, an alias but defers the resource hit that you get when you go actually look at one of these things out on, on the, <coughs> in your tests by keeping a, a tree of all of the things that it, it needs to find. And then when you actually perform an action, it goes and hooks itself up and quote unquote binds it to the test complete objects. Excellent. So there's a number of other classes that uh, you get with this uh, if you download the, the uh, materials from GitHub. Uh, but those are the basic pieces. So we've got things for uh, handling uh, what the browser does, starting it up, closing it, resizing it, uh, handling the cache, uh, date times, handling date ranges in a more uh, fluent manner, uh, handling display, giving a different resolution, emails, lots of other tasks that you need to put together a, a test. So that's the, the framework that you get. What you, uh, for your homework, as it were, um, you're going to write something in, in the app area. And this is how you're going to encapsulate the functional areas of your application. So we have, for instance, conferences for our Events XD application. So we can wrap that up in an object and be able to easily get at it later and say, okay, I want to enter fields on the conference page. Uh, the, the code for this is pretty uh, brief and recipe-like uh, by the time it gets to this level of abstraction. So we just go to the field and set its text. When we go to uh, uh, a button, we just find it and we click it at that point. And because we're returning this for each of these, we can actually chain these together in a, in a fluent syntax. So those pieces you would write and you'd be able to use them you could go this extra step and have tests um, that are just functions that you can use as test item. So this would actually execute uh, what you're going to, the scenarios that you're going to actually want to test against. So you, uh, for instance, the conference would use that uh, conference object. And at that point, it's a very simple, do the entry and save it. That, that is awesome. So if I understand this correctly, there is three folders here. One is called Framework that contains all the framework that you would be downloading from GitHub. 
from um, the framework that we have written here at Falafel. Um, and then you have the app folder, and that's actually your work. You would be creating classes that has properties and functionality and so on that will define your own web application or website that you'd like to test. And then finally, there is a test uh, folder that will contain pretty much execution. It's like almost like test items and test complete, executing instances from the app folder for all the classes you've created. Is that correct? That's correct. Excellent. Is it uh, right now? Is it a complete framework? Is it uh, everything you can do with Test Complete? Has it been automatically done in uh, TypeScript? This is mainly focused on web, and it has the uh, it has the definition files to get started with it. Um, it doesn't go down to the nth level. It's just the basic. Uh, sets of keywords that you would need to get started. I think this is actually a work in progress. It's something we're going to be adding to it That's going correct. forward. And based on the success, we probably will add it to mobile and maybe for the desktop as well. Um, so I'm actually looking forward to that. I, I know that you started from the web because it's the one that's causing the most trouble for people trying to test, uh, especially with JavaScript injection and Ajax and a lot of the nifty stuff is happening in the world, especially with AngularJS 2.0 coming up and so on. So I think it will start with web, see um, how far we can go, and we probably will create something for mobile and for the desktop as well based on demand. Is that correct? That's correct. Well, this is great. Well, thank you very much, Noah. It was a pleasure to have you on the first uh, Falafel Bytes ever. And this is very interesting. I'm looking forward to the um, how this is going to be evolving uh, and going forward. Thank you well, very much. Thank you. Much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Noah. One more thing, actually, we are going to be releasing this uh, this coming week, and we are asking for the audience to help us name the framework. So what should the name of the framework be? Writing TypeScript code in Test Complete. So in the comments, uh, put it uh, in there, and we might take it. And if we choose your name, we will send you um, a gift card for $100. All right. Um, so my most important question is that we know you're a big supporter of Bernie Sanders, and we wanted to find out if that code goes public, does everybody get the same amount of code? Well, I have to put a wall in between the code and some, some other code. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> it's an application boundary. <laughs> Uh, I also noticed uh, there is a lot of missing semicolons, which I, you know that Adam uh, Anderson from our company would be very pleased with your coding style. Yeah, Adam has all my semicolons. <laughs> he took them all. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs>